Please be seated. For Sean, although he was a young man, only about 17 years old, still, he had a very defining focus to his life. He had a drive that pushed him and guided him in everything that he did. And that drive was to achieve one goal, and that was to prove himself to his father. To prove himself to his dad, and therefore hoping to earn his acceptance, earn his love, earn his affection. See, Sean's father had never really been that big a part of his life. He had left very early on when Sean was about nine, but still, even though he was never there, Sean always wanted to feel that love, that approval from this man. He still had a large image and presence in Sean's life. So for Sean, he felt the best way to earn his father's love and acceptance was to emulate him and become exactly who he was. So his one goal in life was to go to the Air Force Academy and become an Air Force pilot. And so when Sean went into high school, he wasn't like a lot of the other kids. This drive fueled everything he did. And it was positive in one sense because he took his studies very seriously because he was going to get into the Air Force Academy. But it was negative in a lot of ways because he was so caught up in doing this one thing. They never really stopped to smell the roses, you know? He never really enjoyed all the activities he was participating in. He never really took advantage of that special time in all our lives where we're teenagers and we're young and we're free and we think we know everything. So finally, college acceptance day came, and Sean had achieved his goal. He had gotten into the Air Force Academy, and everyone was so proud. His mom, his grandparents, his teachers, everyone just continued to congratulate him and say, you know, you've done such a good job, you've worked so hard, and here you are, you've achieved your goal. But the one person he wanted to hear from on that day, the one person whose opinion really, really, really mattered, his father, was not there. Once again, he was absent. No text, no calls, no email, nothing. And Sean was devastated. Now all of us can identify with Sean's pain in some way, form, or fashion, even if his story is not ours, because all of us are trying to prove ourselves to something. Maybe ourselves, maybe our kids, maybe our spouse, maybe our jobs. Whatever it is, all of us live under this sort of tyranny of having to prove ourselves. Having to show that we are good. And that's why our second reading today from St. Paul's letter to the Romans is such good and welcome news. For what St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 that we read today is that there is nothing we have to do to prove our goodness and our worthiness to God. For through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, God has reconciled us to himself and made us good and worthy and acceptable of his love. All that we have to do is simply choose to accept this love or not. So like I said, our second reading today comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. And he wrote this letter in the winter of somewhere around 57 or 58 AD. And the reason that he wrote this letter to this group of followers of Jesus, who he had never met before, but he was hoping to visit, was he wanted to explain what he had now come to see as his sort of call to service, his mission, his job. In life. And that was to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Now, what did that mean? What does it mean to be an apostle to the Gentiles? Well, first off, what it meant for Paul is that his mind had changed about a very important idea, and that is how is one justified? How is one proved to God that one is worthy of his love? 
What Paul used to think is that in order to be justified, in order to be worthy of God's love, one had to do two things. First, become an Israelite, become an ancient Jewish person. And two, follow the law of Moses, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the Ten Commandments and all the other stuff that's wrapped up in there. And if one did those two things, then one was justified. One could see themselves as good in God's eyes and know that there was going to be eternal life for them and participation in the resurrection of the dead. Now, like I said, Paul's mind had changed. And what he now believed is that one was justified by having faith in God and his son, Jesus. That's it. One no longer had to become an ancient Israelite. One no longer had to try to follow the law. All one had to do was simply have faith. That's it. It was that simple. Faith is all one needed to know that they were good, to know that they were worthy of God's love and have earned God's respect and would share in the eternal promises taught by Jesus and the resurrection of the dead. <clears throat> so pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's a truth that's been a part of the Christian faith for thousands of years. But after all these years of this scripture and this truth, do most people believe this about God? No, is the answer, right? No one really thinks this. And just a great way to prove it is talk to some person, maybe a random person, someone who believes in God, they might go to church or not, and you ask them, what do you have to do to get into heaven? And they'll tell you, well, you have to be a good person. And you say, okay, well, what does it mean to be a good person? Well, you know, you act in a certain way. You be good. And as long as you don't, like, you know, act like Hitler, you're going to be okay. So, or some other notoriously bad person example they'll throw out there to show their goodness. And again, you see, it's kind of set up this whole sort of dynamic that now you're in this pattern of through your behavior having to prove yourself to God that you're good enough. But that isn't what the Bible is saying. That's not what our tradition is saying. What it says instead, it's not about being a good person that gets you in that. It's about having faith. It doesn't have to be a big faith. It could be a small faith, the size of a mustard seed. And what this truth tells us, more so than just about faith, is it tells us something very beautiful about God. And that is, we don't have to prove ourselves to God. We don't have to earn God's love. God loves us, period. That love is constant and always there. All we have to do is to accept it. And I don't know about you, but I think that's a very great message of relief. Because in a world where we're always having to earn everything, we're always having to prove our goodness, our worthiness, it's nice to know that that's not the case with God. We don't have to prove anything to God. We are loved, and that is it. That love is always there for us, whether we accept it or reject it. Now, over the course of his senior year, Sean slowly came to terms with the fact that he was never going to be able to win his father's affection. His father had left those many years ago for a reason. And no matter how hard he tried or how hard he wanted to prove himself to this man, it just was never going to happen. So with that, he sort of ditched his goal of emulating his father. He was no longer going to become an Air Force pilot. Instead, when he attended the Air Force Academy, he was going to pursue his passion, which was computers. And once he started to put that idea in his mind, a freedom and joy entered into his life that he had never felt before, because he was no longer living under the weight of this burden of trying to earn his father's love. You know, there's a lot of stress in each one of our lives. And that stress comes from these burdens we're all under. 
try and improve ourselves, trying to earn our goodness, whether it be a good spouse, a good partner, a good parent, a good employee, a good priest, whatever it is. We're always working to earn something in this world. It's just the way the world works. There's nothing we're going to do to change that. But the good news is, is that the Christian life isn't like that. Yeah, sometimes we hear that message, that you have to be good. But what our scripture today brings us back to is that we don't have to prove ourselves to God. We don't have to earn God's love. We are good in God's eyes. We are righteous. We are justified by faith. That's it. Simply faith. And this is a beautiful, beautiful truth. Because it always reminds us of something that we have seen in Jesus. And that is the depth and breadth of God's love. And how we don't have to earn it, but it is there for us freely to accept. And when we freely and faithfully accept this love, we're going to find that kind of freedom that Sean found. The freedom to truly be ourselves, sins and all. The freedom to truly live. And the freedom to truly be loved. Which is the best freedom anyone can ever have. Amen.